بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله تعالى أفمن أسس بنيانه على التقوى من الله ورضوان خير أم من أسس بنيانه على شفا جرف النهار Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that is the one who laid the foundation of his building, bunyanuhum, or his edifice, his structure. Ala taqwa, upon consciousness, upon righteousness, upon sincerity. Min Allah, from Allah, with Allah. Waridwani and seeking his approval or his contentment خَيْرٌ أَمَّنْ أَسَّسَ بُنْيَانُهُ عَلَى شَفَى جُرُفِ Is he greater or the one that lays the foundation of his building on the edge of a bank about to collapse? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ تَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا كَلِمَةً طَيِّبَةً كَشَجَرَةٍ طَيِّبَةٍ أَصْلُهَا ثَابِتٌ وَفَرْعَهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ تُؤْتِي أُكْلَهَا كُلُّ حِينٍ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهَا وَيَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ وَمَثَلُ كَلِمَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ كَشَجَرَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ اجتثت من فوق الأرض ما لها من قرار يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويضل الله الظالمين ويفعل الله ما يشاء The example of I say parable in a lot of translations. Mithal is a similitude. You could say a parable, it has some kind of biblical connotation. You know, but, but the rendering is into the English you know, of the meaning of the verses. Do you not see how Allah sets forth, conveys a similitude and an analogy, uh, a, a similitude? A goodly word, or a good word. It's like a good tree. Tayyib can mean pure. It can mean that which is good. No, it's mean that which is good or that which is pure. Whose root, it's asl, is firmly fixed. Thabit, or you could say firm, deeply rooted. And its branches, fissama, literally in the heavens. It says here reaching to the heavens, but fissama, in the heavens, in the sky. So Allah sets forth these similitudes from, for people in order that they may yatadakarun, means going to a state of tadkir, be reminded go into a state of deep introspection. That's the purpose why Allah conveys these things, to reflect. It brings forth its fruit at all times. By the permission or the license of its Lord. So Allah sets forth these similitudes for people in order that they may receive admonition. And the parable of an evil word, kalimatin khabithatin, that which is foul. Khubth is, is um, also it can mean dirt, and that which is foul, khabith. So a foul word is that of an evil tree. It's an evil tree, a foul tree, khabitha. 
It's torn up by the root from the surface of the earth and has no stability. It has no continuity. Istiqrar is, is, is uh, sustainability. يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِدِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Allah it says will establish it because it is, estab- is continuing to perpetuate because it's fit and maldi to make people firm those who have iman بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِدِ with a firmly rooted word with, a fir- with firm speech in this realm or this plane of existence or fil akhira and in the next but Allah will leave to stray those who do wrong and Allah does whatever he wills Allah does whatever he wills Jalla Jalala So the first verse relating to tetsis, or establishing, founding one's edifice upon taqwa, is related to the continuation of what we'll be speaking about today and what we can started off uh, last Wednesday. If we can approximate the meaning of taqwa to consciousness, it's a God consciousness. It's not any kind of awareness. You can be aware that someone else is in the room. You can be aware that you're being watched. You could be aware that there's a security camera. You can be aware of different things, which is related to consciousness, awareness. But God consciousness takes it to the next level and ultimately the highest level to worship Allah devote yourself to Him as if you see Him and if you don't see Him then know that He sees you He sees you, He's seeing you now didn't, didn't see you in the past, He's seeing you now He's never stopped seeing you He sees you Jalla Jalla So what does it mean to establish one's or found one's, make one's foundations to the building on taqwa? What's the building? What's taqwa? And what's the process of establishing these things? In reality, it's related to ikhlas. Taqwa, as we've said in previous sessions, has uh, multiple definitions. But it's to do that which Allah has called you to do, to live up to your what you've called to to be, you've been called to be, and it's to abstain and move away and refrain actively from that which Allah has told you to abstain from. And it sounds kind of simple, but as we know, there are different levels and there are different filters and different degrees to those filters. And the scholars of tafsir, when they talk in the other ayah that we cited, it's related to kalimat um, al-tawheed. That's one of the dominant opinions. Qawl al-thabit is kalimat al-tawheed. Shahada, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. So Allah will perpetuate this process of establishing this meaning in the person's heart for those who believe people of iman in the dunya and in the akhirah in this life and it continues 
but the experience of that building you know, is different in this life to the next. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مِرْئٍ مَا نَوَى Actions are only valid, they're only of worth in accordance to the intentions behind them. وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مِرْئٍ مَا نَوَى And every person shall, shall get or receive, they have literally, that which they've intended. And in the last session we spoke about the importance of how to make an intention. And we spoke about this vast plane of uh, our daily lives which inhabits the hukum of that which is mubah, that which is merely halal, it's permissible to do. There's a permissibility, you're allowed to do it, but you're not necessarily rewarded for engaging in that act, and similarly, there is no, um, there's no sin which a person um, incurs in performing that particular act. So how do we make those parts of our day in which ultimately we're flatlining, we're plateauing spiritually? How do we make those and transform those into a place of ascension into a place of transformation, into a place of climbing up and higher. And we mentioned that the scholars talk about the iksir, this alexia of the, of the intention, it's that which changes spiritual lead, that which is ultimately worthless, because at best, that time in plateauing is time wasted. And time in and of itself is a, as a vessel is a, is a gift. And the way to change it from spiritual lead into spiritual gold is this activation of intention. And we mentioned that the intention is located in the heart. The reality of the intention, the true intention, the true niya is cradled in the metaphysical heart, the heart which can't be seen, it can't be um, surgically, it can't, it can't, you can't see it, you can't test for it, but it's, it's uh, at the very core of our existence. Is it not the heart? Indeed in the body there is a clump of flesh. Which also alludes to the fact that within the spiritual heart, the scholars say that's all, it's related to the spiritual heart not so totally detached. That physical part of your body is also attached to the spiritual heart. This is why often people in many, many cultures, including in Western culture, that the heart is often a symbol of love. Why would that be the case if it was just a blood pump? If all it did was to pump blood, what, what's that, what does that have to do with one of the prof most profound potentials for the human for human experience which is to love that's something we can think about so to apply this process of actively making intentions to that which is mubah and we gave some examples of going to work or taking a walk for example and eating food for example and we also gave some examples of how you can, in a single act, have multiple intentions. So did anybody, and did anybody uh, feel a bit creative and come up with some intentions? I'm going to leave all the work to me. Not creatively, but just doing, at least doing it. Would you share? Would you feel comfortable sharing some, so we could benefit? Well, I'd 
basically said uh, you know, a few days uh, after the, the session that uh, <coughs> I'm going to work that inshallah after this day uh, that me going to work will uh, help benefit my family and my, 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 my work uh, the product of my work and, uh, and uh, protect uh, those around us and mm -hmm. uh, Rauda and uh, com my company and uh, my family Alhamdulillah they're beautiful mashallah Thank you for sharing those with us. Does anyone else have any, any other intentions for anything they did? Yeah, I just want to, uh, to smile, practice the sunnah, to smile when I'm just walking to work. Mm. So, MashaAllah. Smile to the guy, smile back. You MashaAllah. Know, mm. You just well enough to read me, you know, smile back. Mm. So it's almost like I unlocked something in him. MashaAllah. That's beautiful. Jazakallah khair. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Have you all had a pretty boring week? Huh? Hmm? No one's thought about intentions? I mean, I'm going to start picking on people that make, really make this, the Swede squirm. <laughs> Astaghfirullah. I said, uh, I mean, said no, like, for example, going to school. Mm -hmm. And I think that if I see, I have intention that if I see someone who needs help to help, mm -hmm. if I can hear it, I think if I get an opportunity to help out, to help out. And then I make some, it's like Mr. Rauda so often, but often get things to it. Alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah, to serve and to, to pray in jama'ah. Mm -hmm. Barakallah feek. So that highlights an important part of intention making. That you can make an intention for something that you know you are going to be doing. And that's the difference. With an act of worship, such as the prayer, you can't make an intention. Maybe I might pray. You make the intention, and it's, as we said, it's muqtarinan bi fi'li. It coincides directly with the act. So, for example, the maghrib prayer at the takbir, uh, takbiratul ula. But within the broader realms of this science, what you can do is, as we heard from our dear brother Amin, you can make intention. He knew who was going to go to school, or go to work, or go to. So, you make intention for that particular uh, endeavor. But then you make also kind of uh, branched intentions which go back to that intention, such as if you, when you head out along the way, if you, were you to see somebody that needed help, that you would help them. Okay. And as we know, and, and as we know, the intention of, a, of the believer is greater than his actual work. And one of the meanings of that is you get rewarded even if you don't do it. So if Amin goes to school and everyone just didn't need any help and he's looking around, so he's like, come on, I can help someone out. Nobody needed any help. You know, then he gets the reward as if he'd helped people. Come on. So what, another thing which is important that Amin mentions is that he wrote it down. And this is actually a, a practice that we've really encouraged. It's really encouraged by Shiuch. Because there's something about transposing onto paper and looking at what's going on inside that helps a lot in figuring oneself out. And also keeping it real. Because one of the important things, and we're going to be touching a bit on this today, is the importance of uh, reviewing one's intentions because the maintenance of an intention just as the analogy used in this similitude used in the Quran as a tree needs it needs cultivating you need to maintain it so the initial um, activation of an intention is like placing a seed in the ground and that's when the real work starts. And you may not see the fruits until 
much later. Depends on the tree, depends on the seat, depends on the intention. But we need to irrigate it. We need to make sure that the, the water is, the, the ground is fertile. And one of the important components of this discipline of making daily intentions is your intentions should be growing. How does one intentions grow? So somebody could say, okay, well, I'm still going, outwardly what I'm doing is the same as yesterday. I'm going to work. Does that mean I have to reinstate the same intentions every day? Yes. The scholars say that it's important for each act to reinstate those things. But once again, as we've often spoken about, particularly towards the earlier sessions in this series, is the important is the intention itself is 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 still something of a superficial act. You can you can vocalize it, you can say it, you can write it down. But your experience and your deepening of what that intention means should be growing, should be deepening. So if somebody, for example, makes the intention to go to work for the sake of Allah, to go to work to provide for their family, that intention, we're not going to put a time in it because soil, people, the soil is different in different lands, people's heart, people made of different clay. But at some stage there should be a progress. There should be a deepening of what that intention means. And not only a deepening, but you could say that the, the, brand, the roots become finer. So you become far more conscious of what, what you're doing when you're doing it. And each act, it's like in, uh, like in Final Cut Pro. What's in modern version? Final Cut Pro, it's reason. People use that still. It's not 20 years old like the rest of my references. So like in a, in a, in a, in a filming, uh, what do they call it? Editing, Editing program, you can space things out. So it, go, it goes to like the nth of a second. And that should, is what should start to happen. If you ever see it on a screen, it kind of opens out. So an editor, they can cut and they can paste and they can filter and they can check all of these fine things within the intention. You know, within the screen, but this is the, the analogy with the human with the intention. So the more active you get, you're not gonna have like three intentions and scratching your head, well, I can't really do much more than that. Part of placing that seed is trust in Allah. Placing it down and knowing that Allah will cause the seed to grow. No farmer knows, you can't pick out the roots and pull them out of the seed, then you're going to break the seed. All you have to do is place it in the soil and allow it to grow. And that's one of the essential components of this discipline. Now there may be some times where a person feels like, I just really don't feel conscious, I feel kind of tired. Because it, it, it leads to a... Um, an exertion. Now you can try and, and battle through, but one of the kind of the pitfalls, a kind of uh, a shortcut to connect to really true and big intentions is related to the reality of the intention itself. So as we said that the intention is in the heart and ultimately for that reason, it, it, it has a timelessness to it. There's a mystical component to the intention. And this is why we also mentioned that some of the muhaqiqin, some of the great masters of this science, they said because of the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are certain things that you can actually combine an intention with even long after the act. And that's part of also we said, something we've discussed in previous weeks, al muhasaba. You know, I did that and there was no intention behind it. I just did it. I gave a gift to someone. I didn't make an intention. You'll get rewarded for giving a gift, but imagine if you sat and meditated and considered all of the intentions 
Not only will you be rewarded, but the impact of that gift will have more of a profound effect. Because what you're doing, you're now this conduit for a more powerful energy, a more powerful light. And this is why a smile that's connected to a real intention is very different to a smile which is just done out of awkwardness, for example. Somebody smiles at someone in the street just out of fear or awkwardness. Or that's going to have a, a spiritual effect on the one you're smiling at. But if a person smiles and you've already planted that seed before you even left the door and you're carrying it, the person can like screw their face up at you and you keep on smiling. There was a brother from a particular Western country who was studying or spent some time near to where I'm studying. And he mentioned a story about, uh, okay, I'll mention it. it was in New York. He was in New York. And he was in a tall, high-rise block of flats. And he mentioned that there was this brother that he knew who was uh, Muslim. And what happened was there was a man who was not Muslim, but he was his neighbor. Now, he didn't do a profuse amount of neighborliness. He didn't give him food every, every day. He didn't, he didn't go overboard. But what he did do is he smiled at the person with an intention. Every time this took place. Every time he saw the man. And he went into his flat, as people do, and, you know, and they shut the door. And this carried on for a period of time. Now the man uh, was, you know, uh, he would do this on a daily basis and he said it took around a year until the man turned around and he said, what, why do you keep smiling at me? And he said, and he, and he just said, because it's, 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 it's active in his, we, we're less conscious about like, how are they perceiving that I'm projecting towards them and they're, they're culturally this and you know, in, in our society it doesn't look like it. This is the way our prophet used to be. I'm smiling because this is, this is our way of being. This is how to be. This is how I believe how you should be. And as taught to us by the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, and he start, and he said, you know, I want to find out more about this because this last year I've been going through a really rough time, and it got to such a state, and I'm so lonely that there were many times I'd come back, and the whole trip home I was planning how I could really just end it all. And the only thing that stopped me was your smile. And he said, so, so, so what's the secret of that smile? And after some time, it was the means for the person to embrace Islam. But the point here is that was not a, an unrooted smile. That was a smile which was rooted and that was cultivated in intention. We often talk about this concept of spiritual ripples. That's rooted in through the intention. You're anchoring yourself. This is where I'm drawing this source from. It's not an empty smile. This is where I'm drawing. This is the well which I'm dipping into. And we're all drawing from different wells. If you draw from the well of awkwardness and social, you know, anxiety, then you're going to project that. You know? And that's a real thing for many of us. Like it's really difficult. How do you interact? How do you interface? You know? Especially if a person, you know, through the constant news feed which we're 
indoctrinating ourselves and intravenously feeding ourselves with, it, it can lead to a false projection of how other people perceive you. But what the intention does, if it's cultivated, if it's maintained for a period of time, because at the end of the day, you're just holding out the bowl. You're just holding out the cup. That, cu that which fills the cup can only come from the source of reality. It's, we don't have a choice in it. But the edeb, the etiquette, the mode of being, what we're required to do is say, I'm here. And Allah won't dash people's hopes if they're constantly at His door. And in reality, if we really contemplate that, that yearning to hold that cup and to present it and to want from Allah is ultimately only from Allah. And we have to reflect upon this. That desire to be filled that, desire, that recognition that there's an emptiness and who was that from? So you can make multiple intentions for one act. And as we said, this is also uh, indicative of a person's state of spiritual well-being. The healthier a person's inward, the person, uh, uh, the healthier a person's heart is and soul is, the more, the, the easier they'll find making intentions is. And this is another kind of you could say like a, a uh, when you check your it's like checking the spiritual pulse. And if you find that those intentions are running dry, it's, a, it's, it's indicative that that well is drying up. And you need to do something in order to dig a little deeper. And sometimes these things can be taken away. Or they can be reduced because Allah wants you to go deeper. Allah wants you to go deeper into that place of self-reflection. Reflection, that place of introspection, so you don't plateau. Because that's not the bottom of the well. So may Allah give us tawfiq to taste from that well. Now, part of the beauty of the intention, as we mentioned, is it's related to this mystical place of no time and no... And no uh, no space it's located in the heart and that's why Allah looks to the heart because it's the place where that reality of your being your trajectory your movement can be read where are you really moving to where are you orienting towards the intention is the, the ultimate compass in that regard because it shows where you're pointing to what am I aiming for And what can, because of the nature of what the intention is, it's also possible to connect it to other intentions. As we know, the, 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 the nature of the soul and the heart is it can have a, uh, a communication with other hearts. It can have a resonance. The state of a person's being, as mentioned in the last se session, has rays which can permeate a, another person's satellite. And you can connect to that satellite if you know the, the codes. But what you do is now, not only do you work in capacity to your satellite, which may be slightly, you know, you only get a couple of channels, but by connecting to that broader satellite, other things now pour in. Now what we're talking about here is connecting one's intention to the intention of those people whose intentions were accepted and dear by, to Allah. How do you do that? By simply saying, 
You don't have to think, well, do I really know what they intend? That's it, that's a place down the line. But just to apprehend this. And this is why one of the practices that the scholars say, if you find you can't think of an intention, or even if you've made many, many intentions, always seal it with, I, I intend that which the righteous intended in this particular act. Nawaitu manawa salaf salih Nawaitu manawa salihin Righteous people. And aslah salihin the greatest of those righteous people was Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And ultimately there's no such thing as an intention which was made by people of righteousness, except it goes back to that heart, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one that taught us the science of intentionality, how to orientate ourselves back from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and just in the same principle to any karama, khariq al-ada, anything which goes outside the norm within the physics of Allah's creation, it's permissible in our aqidah, in our creed, for a wali, a person of God. This is from the mu'jiza or the miracle of the, pr- the particular prophet of that ummah. And we find this with the sahaba, we find this with the tabi'een, the people that came after the prophet Muhammad But it's ultimately from his blessing, it's part of his mu'jiza. The Salaf would say, and I'm going to kind of translate this in, in two ways. Man yiftah ala nafsihi niyatin saliha fatah Allahu alayh sabi'een abwaab min abwaab at tawfiq. The one that makes a good intention, but literally yiftah ala nafsihi opens for his, their own self. Opens within their self, actively seeks a good intention for himself or herself. That Allah facilitates 70, and opens 70 doors of success or divine grace. Tawfiq for him. And as we know, Al-Adad uh, and Al-Arab la mafhum laha. Numbers with the Arabs in this context has no meaning. So what it doesn't mean is that you've got 69 doors and you know, one more to go and that's the doors of Tawfiq now closed up for you. It's similar as you would typically say in English is, you know, my car is 100 times better than your car. It's not a statistical analysis of the components and when you get to 98, 99 and you're running out of wind, you know, of reasons. But what it means is actually, it, it's, Allah opens all the doors of tawfiq. And as the analogy is, we, we, we started off with, with, the, with the Quran, is the nature of the tree as it branches out. So from that single trunk that was once this single small sapling, which just came from this small seed that was tended to, now you have all of these branches that are in the heavens. They're celestial, they're heavenly in their orientation. Whereas a foul intention ultimately will, will kill itself. It will, the tree will mutate and kill its own self. So, the practice of actively making intentions is directly related to the science of ikhlas, sincerity, being sincere for Allah. And it's not only making intentions, but it's scrutinizing those intentions. So, in our practice of muhasaba, we should start to now, which is taking oneself into account, 
Look at those things that we did and scrutinize the intentions behind them. Why did I do what I did? Why did I say what I said? Why did I act in the way that I acted? And to go really deep. And what happens here is you're able to tend to the root. Because as a principle, we look to the root and not the fruit. Because the root can be decaying and the fruit looks kind of good. It takes a while for that decay to reach the, the extremities. And I'd like to read or close just with uh, something in this regard, related in this regard. قد يكون القلب عاصيا والجوارح طائعة كما قد يكون الإنسان عالم باللسان جهل, جهل قلب وهذا فصل عظيم النفع لمن تأمله لأن أصل في أصول الأعمال تنبني عليه أشياء مهمة في السلوك في إعسيان الجوارح أهون من إعسيان القلب فلنذكر الآن في هذا الفصل أهم الأعمال وأولاها بالتقدم فنقول التقرب إلى الله تعالى يكون بفعل الطاعات واجتناب المعاصي أهم عند العارفين من الإكثار من الطاعات مع تسامح في ارتكاب شيء من المآثم Then he closes with the ayah which we, which we uh, commence to it so in summary, what he's talking about here is the essential nature of the intention. And he says that it may be that a person is in a state, if you look at their diagnosis, that what they're doing outwardly is in obedience to Allah. But the qalb is asi, the, qalb, the heart, the reality is in sin. Because they haven't got what's called ihkam and niyyah. They haven't really focused on what they're rooting their actions in, what they're rooting their words in, what they're rooting their life in, what they're rooting their studies in, what they're rooting their daily habits in. Why are you doing what you're doing? Who is it for? Really? So you can go through the acts, but if it's not rooted, then what starts to happen, people start to burn out. It's one of the causes of spiritual burnout. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the person's intention is foul. It could simply mean that the, that the intention is absent. And if you're going through the motion, but there's no fuel, then sooner or later you're going to burn out. And part of the beauty of Islam is this culmination of form and reality. And this analogy, once again, that if you keep on drinking from a glass and there's nothing in the glass, there's only so long you can go on pretending that what tastes, you know, it tastes good. There has to be something in the glass, in everything that we do. The glass is the form of, our, of what we do, our acts of worship and our daily practice, even our habits. It's a, like a glass, like a cup, a vessel. But the ruh, the real spirit, the drink which nourishes our approach to Allah, which nourishes our iman and our faith and in our, our experience, is the water. So we ask that our, all of our thirst is, is quenched. And may Allah allow our, that which we're building to be established and founded upon taqwa, true consciousness. And to root that which we're establishing and that which is being grown within us in the realities of taqwa and consciousness. Through the channels of irrigation, of the greatest of which is our intentions.
into this meaning they say the nurania or the, the, the illumination, the radiance of abstinence is more penetrating and more powerful than the radiance or the light that comes through itian, through merely doing something. And for that reason they also say that anybody can do righteous acts. Barwal Fajr. A truly righteous person with Allah or a foul person. But what's tr a true sign of taqwa is to abstain from that which we've been told to abstain from. And many of the people of Allah, that their primary focus would not be merely on doing loads of extra stuff. And that's why they don't burn out. But it's in rooting out those weeds within the heart through examining, through muhasaba, and rerouting righteous intentions, even in the small things that they did. And that's why they're people, typically, as we've said many, many times in these sessions, of few words. The words are rooted, kalimatin tayyibah, goodly words. They're rooted in deep soils, fertile soils. And that's why it has an effect, not only on them, but on other people around them. And with, with many things in this process, is when you engage in the process, it's not only how it affects you, but if you take on the active movement towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by rooting those intentions, you start to change the soil, your own team, your own spiritual makeup. As we know that the roots play a, an absolutely essential part to making the earth fertile, to creating avenues and places for things to bring, come back to life. Because there's such a thing as dead soil. And they talk about this in sustainability and how soil can be reactivated or literally brought back to life. And the art of intentions, the practice of intentionality, what it does is it brings our clay back to life and back to light. So we come into contact with that light above the top soil. Every single one of us, we're part clay and part light. That's part of our human makeup. With a, we need to feed the clay through eating. That's how the clay is sustained. But we also need to feed the light. And that's through rooting it in the reality of intention back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Start off small. That's a really important thing within all of these practices. But write them down. Go through your day from morning to night. How am I orientating myself during this day? And go through a practice. This is your daily thing to be intentional. And if it seems boring that, okay, three months in and I'm still only going to work just to provide for my family. You know, I know I'm doing that. And at the very least it does is it allows you to not be, di you know, uh, diverted from the path. The hakam and niyyah, to keep your intention firm. And part of keeping an intention firm, it's like those roots going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. You'll start to take nutrients that you didn't even know existed. So these things are a process of growth. Some of these things there are no words for, but we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He allows us to be rooted in that which is real. <coughs> the next session, inshallah, we're going to be speaking about dhikr and fikr. Dhikr as we know, is, is remembrance of Allah. And fikr is prophetic contemplation. How Rasulullah would meditate. And meditation is the focus on one, one particular thing or reality. And that's why it's closely related to dhikr as well. So remembrance and, and contemplation. And all of these things, they, they coincide because it's part of, as we said, it's the importance of understanding the nature of the map. 
You're not working on one thing. Well, I've been trying to make intentions, but I'm not doing anything else. I'm not irrigating it with dhikr. I'm not, I'm not causing it to grow through the, the, the light, the sunlight you know, of fikr and active contemplation. So the more that we acquaint ourselves and deepen all of these things, then our roots will grow. And they, they work off each other. The more dhikr that we're able to do, the more your capacity to contemplate and reflect starts to expand and vice versa. The more intentional you become. And all of these things slowly grow and grow and grow. And all of a sudden it's like a, like a tree bearing fruits. So may Allah give us tawfiq in that, inshallah. Are there any questions? Are there any intentions? So the active practice, if, I, if I've understood the question, of producing intentions, bringing to the forefront of one's mind, is essential for a beginner on the, on the spiritual path. Because the problem is, is we think we know why we're doing stuff, but that we, the way we act often denies that. So a person that's truly rooted in an intention for Allah, the way they behave in their akhlaq is going to be in accordance to that intention. They're not going to get frustrated at the same family that were, they were providing for, for physical monetary sustenance. Or at very least they're going to catch themselves, wait a minute, this contradicts the intention. The whole thing, what it does is this process of, you know, molding the clay. You know, as opposed to just leaving it out in the sun to bake and go hard. That's, that's saluk, you're going to get punched, you're going to get shaped, you're going to get kneaded like dough. You know, you're going to stretch, you're going to get pulled. But to be aware, this is all part of the process of being sculpted into something which is ultimately able to enter into the presence, presence with Allah. It's something which is pleasing to Allah. That your heart is something, it's on that wavelength that the Prophet ﷺ was on. And one thing like, forget 2021, we don't even know we're going to get home tonight. That's the thing, this whole thing about New Year's resolutions. For the people of this science, that's like, that's long hopes. And one of, the, one of the purposes of that is you get rewarded every time you make that intention. Do I need the reward? Nah, I'm not really that bothered. The people of Allah are not on that. Every time you realign, you reset. It's like maintenance of the car. Do I really need to check the oil? It's got, it, you know, there's fuel in it. Do we need to check the, the or do we need to check the water? Sooner or later it's going to run dry and it might be too late. It might be in the, in the middle of the wilderness and there's no opportunity to do so. And also once again, to reiterate, that practice of deepening one's intention will lead to further growth. So if a person just, you know, the beginning of 2021, it's like a whole year away, you know, I'm going to do this, 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 that's good. And we have to understand as well, like, it's not 2021, it's 1441. First and foremost. And the season that we're in now is a season for rooting intentions. After Maghrib of today, we've entered into the month of Rajab, Al Asad. It's a real shame that many Muslims, like, we're only aware of the season, like Ramadan. Because you have to give something up. And it's fard. But the Prophet ﷺ on a night like tonight, after Maghrib, we're on, in one of the four Ashhur al-Huram, sacred months, sanctified months. That's what we're in now. To the spiritual climate, the seasons changed, the winds have changed, the, the, the weather has changed. 
The Prophet ﷺ would say, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa ballighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, bless us in this month of Rajab, bless us in Sha'ban and allow us to reach Ramadan. So this is a month to, to root intentions and to do all the time. Not just in, in seasons, but in places and in times. Because there may be some times, like in a special gathering or being in... If you're in Mecca or in Medina or in a gathering of dhikr or sacred knowledge, that when you root an intention, Allah places barakah in, in it. Because once again, we're not, we don't control, we don't put limits on Allah. Well, normally this seed takes a certain amount. If Allah wants it to grow, Allah will cause it to grow. And things can flourish overnight. You place a seed and you open the door and all of a sudden it's a flower and it's fruit and this whole tree in your front room. And that can happen spiritually. So have a good opinion of Allah. What it is, it's saying Allah, as we said last time, Allah, I'm here. And I'll be here till the end of time for you. What else better can I be doing than orientating myself to, to affirm that I'm still here? Oh Allah, in the... In the, in the um, Imam al-Haddad says in a line of poetry, I'm just here standing in the, the word, the valley of your grace. So keep me in this place. Keep me here. Like I'll wait till the end of time. I'll wait forever for you. you know? And that's the thing, you know, the the reality of uh, of this science, it's it's for people that people of irada, people that desire, people that want to love or have that love and want to Deepen that love of Allah and that connection to Allah. Otherwise, um, it's just a chore. There's nothing dearer to me than that which I have made obligatory for the person, for my abd, my servant. And he continues to gain closeness to me. Bin Nawafil through extra things. Like it's not an obligation to actively every day reinstate one's intention. Why am I doing what am I doing? But Allah loves it. Because instead of saying, well, whatever, I already did that yesterday, let's carry on driving, let's, let's, let's put another podcast on because it's, you know, it's, my nafs inclines to, I'm not saying you do that. I'm saying that might be the case. Um, you say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something for Allah. I'm going to make an active move away from that and move to Allah. Until, until I love him. And if I love him, I've become the hearing by which he hears. And the sight by which he sees. That's the wali. That's the person of God. That's the saint in our tradition. It's not someone that's been ordained by some other worldly human structure or power or hierarchy. You've been ordained by the ultimate reality, you know, the creator of all reality. Al-Haq. Man adhani waliyan. The one that causes, that hurts one of my friends, a wali of mine. Faqad adhantuhu bil One of the greatest ways to activate these intentions and become people of connection is to connect to the people who are connected. And any little way to activate these intentions. Why am I doing what am I doing? Why am I saying what am I saying? Why am I thinking what I'm thinking? And for who? So to reinstate that, what that will do is it will open things up, it will reaffirm it in one's mind, and it will deepen it, and it will grow. So just plant the seed and see it. See what happens, inshallah. Activate that spiritual DNA. And that's what every single, it's part of the beauty of the human being, that potential, that you have this DNA within you, spiritual DNA. To like spread these amazing, you know, seeds, and that has an effect. If you're on the way to, it's not just for you; it's for other people. When you make those intentions, that will leave a nur, a light, like a pollen, you know, when you're walking and when you're talking and walking through the roads. We know the Prophet ﷺ, he said that there were roads that boast to one another. That one day there was a, there was a man, there was a person that that walked on me and that was remembering Allah. How do we understand that? Because everything has a form of consciousness and we need to plug into this and understand and deepen our iman and our yaqeen in this. Billahi yeah. tawfiq. Alhamdulillah, we're 
deeply honored to uh, be invited and to attend the janaza, the funeral prayer of our dear sister, Sister Jamila. Jamila means beautiful. So may Allah make her end beautiful and her resting place beautiful and her end abode beautiful. A beauty, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu described Jannah in it is that which no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, it has never occurred to the human heart. So beauty beyond one's imagination. May Allah make that her resting place, inshallah. And, and all of the other people which were taken back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise her state and all of those people which uh, traversed onto the next life. And that which we're all heading to. For innuhum ulaqi, death is facing you. Not it will face you, it's facing you now, every single one of us. So may Allah allow us all to take it as an ibra and as a point of reflection that we sober up when we engage in this journey. This is only one way to go. For aina tadhabu, where are you going to go? You're going to go to other than Allah, or you're going to reorientate back to Allah and enter into that presence, enter into that beauty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected to those people that are constantly on that path and constantly oriented and bless her and bless her family and her loved ones and make grant her family a beautiful patience and allow us to be all inspired by her legacy. That the greatest thing that we can do is take inspiration from our dear sister and also to be people that increase in devotion and turning back to Allah, to become more real. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم بالسلام والصلاه والسلام على حضره النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم